Since neither of us are lawyers, we are not going to give legal advice. We are going to stick to what we know best as engineers. We will tell you what we personally think the key steps are when you're building an app that puts user privacy first. The first step to managing privacy is to get a clear idea of the data that your app needs, which features are using that data, and how long you need to keep it. For example, let's say we have an app and we want to make sure that our users are European citizens over 18. Instead of storing the user's full birthday and country of birth, we only need to store whether they meet our two criteria. You should delete user data not only when the user removes their account, but also when you no longer need a specific set of data for your app to function. An example of this is a high score list in which you only need to keep the highest scores and not the complete history. You can find an article that explains how to set up a cron job that triggers a cloud function in the Firebase Summit schedule. You'll also want to ensure that you no longer keep data for users that delete their accounts. If you're, calling Fire, if you're using Firebase authentication, you can call the delete API of Firebase user object to delete an account. Calling delete will not, however, remove user data from other Firebase products such as Firestore. But if you're going serverless, that cleanup is a great use case for cloud functions. We've done some of the work to get you started by publishing a general purpose account deletion function that you can tune to work with your own data model. There's a link to it in the Firebase Summit schedule. If you keep user data portability in mind when you're designing your data model, then deleting and exporting data can be as simple as configuring and deploying a generalized function. We've released another cloud function called export data that can help you with this. We also link to this function in the Firebase Summit schedule. And we've published a guide for clearing and exporting user data. There's a link to it in the Firebase Summit schedule. Security rules are your first line of defense in creating secure Firebase apps. Secure apps really are an essential part of treating your users' data well, and correctly configuring security rules is an important step in preventing unauthorized data access. Before you deploy rules, you should test them using security rules simulators in the web console. These simulators let you test different kinds of requests so you can verify that what you want to succeed does succeed, and those requests that you want to be blocked are blocked. Simulators are available in the Rules tab for Firestore, the real-time database, and storage. To make sure that you have confidence in your rules going forward, you can now also create rules, you can also create unit tests that use the new local security rules emulators for Firestore and the real-time database. These tests can even be added to your existing continuous integration workflow, and there's a link to get you started in the Summit app. It's important to understand both the way that your app is using data and the way that and the Firebase terms when you're ready to inform your users about your own privacy. The first thing to know is that deleting data from our backend systems does not immediately delete all copies of the data from our system. Some of it's kept temporarily in backups and caches. We've created a guide to storing and using privacy settings in Firebase that explains how to automatically maintain activity logs. As always, you can find a link to this guide in the Firebase Summit schedule. <laughs>